Hello, my name is Carolina Guayo, and today I will be presenting artificial intelligence as an enabler for information accuracy. And my advisor throughout my research process was Tom McClelland from the Cambridge Center of International Research. Well, throughout my research, I prove whether a machine can or cannot practice meta learning, which is when a model is made for a machine to learn skills, and if it can develop its own judgment, opinions, and arguments. This ability will this will be tested, sketching some of the details and the possible issues in constructing such a machine, and outline how we might overcome them. Now, the problem that I discuss throughout my research is, if a if a person were to give a machine a text that tests a false argument, could a machine ever automate the process of identifying if a text has false premises and incorrect assumptions based on credible information? Now, my hypothesis for this problem was, if a machine were to be provided with a text that's, that's a false argument, then a machine automate the process of identifying the text has false premises and incorrect assumptions by using highly technical programming, algorithmic model implementation, and data availability that feeds the foundation of what we call artificial intelligence. Now, I'm going to discuss the purpose of my research, which is the most important part, because it gets people to be interested in my research. So as researchers and readers, we are responsible for evaluating all our information sources, including information found on the internet. However, sometimes completing this task and assuring the information found is reliable and, and trustworthy can be difficult. There is a recurring issue surrounding the spread of fake news and factually incorrect statements that result in misinformed people. People informed by fake news make decisions based on information from untrustworthy or biased sources. Wrongly influenced decisions can lead to unfortunate and unwanted consequences. We can see this in our world. There has been political issues that have been persuaded one way instead of another because of the media and people being informed by bias and untrustworthy information. Now, but if people are well informed by trustworthy information, they will make educated decisions. Therefore, I sketched out a machine throughout my research that resolves this recurring issue. Now, the procedure. What is my machine doing to solve this issue? Well, the machine will first take a text, analyze it, and give an educated response based on the information presented. The first steps this machine would take to carry out this function are to inspect the text, Identify keywords crucial for the understanding of the text. Identify the types of sentence and what it implies. And identify what is being stated, questioned, or argued in the text presented to the machine. After the machine knows the important traits of the text and its keywords, it knows what to search for. And then proceeds to identify credible and trustworthy sources to back up, contradict, or give an answer to a statement question or argument presented in the text. To gather the resources needed to have an educated response, the machine needs to clarify and differentiate precise and trustworthy from, un from inaccurate and untrustworthy sources of information. Knowing what the input means and what it needs to be answered will help the machine give the user a precise output, either that be an answer to a question or a contradicting argument to a statement presented. Now, one of the main questions that came up while sketching out my machine was, how does the machine interpret a text? Well, the machine is programmed to understand and interpret a text because it is necessary to include models within the algorithm that responds to this trait and it could affect the meaning of a message. Now, knowing the context of the input is important to identify the meaning of homographs so the true meaning of the input is understood. Homographs are words that are written differently, not written the same, but they have different meanings and different pronunciations sometimes, but they are written the same. So if they are, there are homographs in a text, then the machine will take those homographs and, and understand the meaning of the sentence in order to understand what the homograph means and the true meaning of the text will be understood because the homograph in the sentence was spotted, first of all, and then seen at the context of it to 
know what it means. And then if a machine would work from speech to text, because there are two possibilities to the machine, the user can insert a text and the machine will analyze it, or the machine can speak to the, uh, the user can speak to a machine and the machine can analyze what the person is saying. When a person is talking, there are homographs that the machine needs to identify. Um, an example could be the three twos. I go to the park, I love the number two, and I love you too. Well, the machine needs to identify the context of what the person is saying to understand which word or homophone in this case is being used and understand the true meaning of the text. Now, Another key point to my research is to identify the keywords in a text, which can be difficult because it is crucial to identify if the word, if the text includes a statement, a question, a command, or an exclamation, so the machine knows what to search for, either that be an answer to a question or an argument. The machine will identify the, the, these traits by knowing the punctuation marks in the text. Now, and the tone if a person is speaking. The machine needs to identify commas and semicolons to determine which words in a sentence go together and which elements of your sentence are the most relevant. By recognizing commas and their use, the keywords within the text can be easily spotted. The keywords that will hint the, what the user is looking to answer if it is a question is who, what, how, why, where, and when. That will indicate if the user is saying, where is the nearest supermarket? The machine knows that it needs to answer a, with a place. Now, variations between types of sources. It, because when the machine resorts to different sources to back up, contradict, or answer a question, argument, or statement presented, there are all sorts of sources that come up and the machine needs to identify which type of sources are used in different occasions. For example, entertainment sources and informational sources are the two main types of sources that machines will analyze and help differentiate between when they are used. Identifying credibility within informational sources is a tedious task because most sources purpose is not solely to inform. Some sources are used for persuading and only give a one-sided perspective because it is crucial to identify the purpose of a source. There has to be a distinction between the scenario where the machine uses entertainment sources and when it uses informational sources. Entertainment sources are used when the issue presented has to do with media or Hollywood and maybe pop artists, etc. The machine will then go for entertainment sources to answer that question or statement because it has to do with those topics. But if we are talking about the COVID-19 cases in the United States, the machine will then resort to informational sources because the topic has to do with information, not really entertainment. And for it to be more accurate, the machine should resort to informational sources that are proven to be accurate. Entertainment sources are also not as accurate sometimes because it are, they are not provided with facts or they are not cited with the information that they use. It, it is usually not scientifically proven or historically proven. They are just for entertainment and their sole purpose is to get an emotion out of the reader or the user. Now, when looking for a reliable source, the machine has to consider if the source is reputable. Knowledgeable authors, currency, accuracy, authority, and relevance are characteristics of a reputable source. Another characteristic of a reputable source is peer reviewed because the articles and the books that are peer reviewed have to go through a process of proving that they are accurate and that they are a reliable source of information. There are always exceptions. Peer reviewed has its um, downside to it, but it is usually an indication of a good information source and trustworthy source that my machine will um, rely on for information to provide the user with. Now, differentiating credible sources from untrustworthy sources. In order to identify a credible source, there has to be other informational sources supporting the data presented and they need to be cited. When in search for factual information to support or contradict a user's argument, the machine finds sources that assimilate with the user's opinion and some that contradict it. Identifying when sources are trying to persuade someone to have a similar opinion as them is crucial to finding facts 
that support or contradict the argument presented. The sole purpose of my research is to help people get both sides of an argument and to be better educated with full factual and accurate information. In this case, well, the machine needs to find sources that are not only support their argument, but some that contradict it so they can build a case full of actual, factual information and get the user several perspectives to an argument so they can educate themselves with accurate information instead of bias and untrustworthy sources. Now, international, national, or locally based information. If the information presented in the text or you know, in speech has to do with international, national, or locally based information, has to do with many of the sources that the machine will access because when searching for facts that support a point of view to an international issue, a machine has to lean on worldwide sources, each with their own claims to support the point of view presented. The machine identifies the claim, gives facts that supports it, and then identifies a contradicting argument and supports it with facts. If the issue presented in the text is international, then the machine searches for, point, for the points of views of the main countries involved in this worldly issue and presents facts that support each of the country's claims. The topic being discussed will influence if the sources searched for are international, national, or locally based. If the information presented has to do with the volleyball tournament in my town this weekend, well, the machine will identify that it has to do with a local issue and it will search for the town's newspaper or the town's news outlet because it has nothing to do with other countries or with the nation. There, will, there wouldn't be any information on the tournament in my town in the national news, unless it's a really important tournament, <laughs> but mostly it wouldn't be in a national news outlet. But if it has to do with a political party or the presidential elections, in the United States, well, then it, the machine will resort to national sources because it's information that the whole nation knows and that is provided to the whole country. And it has to do with um, the a conflict between China and the United States because of the importing and the exporting between the countries, then the machine will lean on international sources, some from China and from, from the USA, so they can get both sides of the perspective and, and the issue. So the user can be provided with full factual information from both countries and, you know, really get a sight of what these worldly issues is and how it is affecting the whole world. Now, in conclusion. Trustable sources are critical for long-term intellectual development and for a sustainable body of knowledge. As I demonstrated throughout my research, we can teach a machine to rule out untrustworthy sources and find us information using those sources that are proven to be accurate. Machines can also learn to help us have quick access to both sides of an argument in order for us to process and conclude what is our own perspective on matters. This creates an environment where people can educate themselves with accurate and unbiased information. Although this is a complex set of tasks to ask of a machine, it becomes repeatable with highly technical programming, algorithmic, algorithmic model implementation, and data availability that, make, that feeds the foundation that we call artificial intelligence. Our world is a community made up of all kinds of people whose diversity not only calls for ways to connect, but also to find, to use new technologies, to be more precise and accurate in our decisions, more accurate in our thinking, and to reach conclusions and understand relevant perspectives. This machine I have been exploring throughout my research promises to ensure that users are well-informed with credible and filtered sources that support conclusions with accurate facts. In our current political context, and this is, I'm referring to the United States. There is a recurring issue surrounding fake news. This machine promises to combat these concerns. Thank you for your time. And I hope you enjoyed the presentation. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me. I would be more than happy to answer them.
Okay, thank you so much, Carolina. Uh, maybe you didn't hear the previous uh, presenter, but the previous uh, presenter also uh, presented uh, her solution uh, in a different way on, on, on countering misinformation. So this is something really of a very um, important topic and something that is very relevant of our society right now. So we definitely appreciate your insight into this. And it's uh, uh, your, your idea of a, a machine. It's something that is... Um, uh, it, it looks like something that can be, you know, very helpful uh, when it comes to uh, everyone in the society to decide what is misinformation or not. So uh, I'll be taking some questions but, uh, on the floor, but uh, uh, we also have some commentator that uh, left some questions, but uh, couldn't be here because of scheduling difficulties. So I'm going to read some of their uh, questions first. Uh, so one of the question is, um, so you talked about this uh, idea of a machine. So what would be a, a feasible platform uh, for this machine? Is it a, a standalone uh, platform or, a, or it's more of a, like a website for people to, uh, to input their uh, uh, questionable uh, uh, news or, or information or it's more of a, um, like an add-on implemented to our, for example, current news outlet or the social media uh, websites. Uh, I think you muted yourself. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I plan on, be, on it being a website. So because m many students encounter a problem when writing essays and looking for research paper, um, sources that they don't know if the information is accurate or not and if it's not peer-reviewed we don't really have a way of identifying if we should really really trust this information presented if it's not from you know an encyclopedia or a source that has a you know a reputation of being accurate so it would function as a platform to copy paste information or and put it in on the website so the machine can analyze it and then give a response whether it is accurate information or inaccurate information and if I can use it to write my research on it and it also functions if I have a doubt or I, I, I saw on the internet that this political uh, party was doing bad things and you know legal things I can you know, put that information to see if it's you know if if that's really a rumor, if it's correct, and then it provides me, well, that is opinion-based. My machine would say that's opinion-based. Here are facts that support that, but that is not necessarily true. And these are facts that contradict it that are you know, more reliable because it, th these facts that contradict the statement you just presented are proven to be accurate and reliable. Great. Uh, so we also have another question um, from another commentator. Uh, she asks, uh, so th there, now there's this idea that even algorithm and art artificial intelligence can sometimes be biased. And this is idea that actually uh, echoes in, in both sides of, of the political uh, spectrum. Uh, for example, some people think that um, uh, the algorithms can be racist when they are uh, identifying the, the photos. I'm sure you've heard some uh, uh, issues like that. So even if your uh, proposed uh, machine uh, website is uh, solely based on algorithm and artificial intelligence, some people may argue that uh, because it is still uh, you know, produced by the human, uh, the algorithm is coded by human, uh, it could be still uh, um, uh, not 100% uh, accurate or could be biased in some way. And that could actually hurt the, the authority of, of your uh, set uh, machine. So what, what would be, be your uh, response to this sort of uh, criticism and questions? Well, my machine would if the information presented or the website, the article presented that is being debated if it's accurate or not, will only be said to be accurate if there are as data, like a lot of data that proves it to be accurate, if there is work that was um, cited that is accurate and peer reviewed, and if the author or 
company, that institution that published it is known to be reputable and that it has a reputation of being precise. But it is very important to me to, for the machine to, if it has to do with any scientific, historic information, that there is a lot of work proves it to be accurate and that it, there are as evident information that supports their contradicting point of view or the point of view that is um, supported in that article or source of information. And they, they can prove, if, if I were to talk to the author, that they can prove that it is correct and they can just show me plenty of work that justifies their claims. And if there is not a that sort of reaction to the text that they are, that is a, uh, especially if it, it's a blog or a source of information that is not proven to be accurate, then the machine will automatically say, no, it is, there's not enough information to support these um, claims and they, they are, automatically kind of eliminated, or if the user calls for a contradicting point of view and they really need like a different perspective on it, the machine will then resort lastly to blogs and their sort of, inf of information, giving the user a warning that it's not necessarily reliable information, but if you really want a point, uh, contradicting point of view, here it is, And but we do not like claim that this is accurate. It's just a contradicting point of view and a contradicting perspective, and that it can be opinion based. Because uh, and if the per, the user identifies, uh, um, puts on the machine a an argument that is not supported when it is looked up, there is no information that supports that is true or false. Then the machine will say there is not information enough to justify if it's true or not. So it can be a, like, it is opinion based or it could be considered opinion based because there it's not, there's no sufficient information to support the statement you just inputted into the machine. It, it is not going to be a perfect machine and it can, if it's, there's not enough information because the machine cannot find it in any of its sources, then it will say there, I can't, you know, because of credibility, I can't tell you if it's true or not because there's not information that supports it. So I will automatically take your claim and say that is there's not it is on like undeniably in not supported enough. So it can be correct or incorrect. It is just opinion based or there it can be credible. So that is what machine would do. Okay. Great. Uh, just a comment from me. I, I, I really appreciate your, your idea. And I think you mentioned some really, really important points. Uh, one of them is that you mentioned, um, you know, many of the misinformation nowadays, they are just here to s basically spark your emotion. Uh, they are not actually offering uh, any information. Uh, they are just letting people basically question the established uh, science fact in many cases, as we've seen in the, in the vaccines. Um, they are not necessarily saying, for example, machines doesn't work with their own alternative facts. Uh, they are just letting people to question if vaccine can work. And there's a lot of suspicion about people and they just decide not to take it. Uh, well, you know, in the, in, in the uh, previous uh, post-truth area, era, um, people would just basically agree with, you know, what the, what is the, uh, coming out of from the established scientific figure. So this is something that is, uh, very important. I think you touch upon. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't think we have any questions on the floor. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much for coming to the symposium. Yeah, you are our last presenter today. We had a very successful day. Uh, thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much for having me. I hope Absolutely. that it was a wonderful day for you guys and that you keep having a good day.